Hi there, Lee Farnell here from Leading Your Best Life, and uh, this is really exciting. It's, it's What time is it? It's 7.38 on a Saturday morning, and I'm so excited by a podcast I just watched on YouTube. I want to share it with you and what it meant to me about marketing. It says $22,381 worth of marketing advice in 63 minutes. It's uh, an interview with a guy called Simon Squibb uh, talking with the vice chairman of Ogilvy Major, one of the largest largest marketing agencies in the world, Rory Sutherland. And boy, oh boy, it was so stimulating, so interesting that uh, I want to talk about it with you now. Stay tuned. Okay, look, I should be getting down the beach and having coffee with my friends right now, but I want to share this with you because I'm so excited by it, um, particularly in the context of a workshop I ran with a professional services client during the week. Um, and as I said at the start of the workshop with these clients, hey, listen, guys, firstly, there's a pa- two paradigm shifts we call about the yellow zone. The yellow zone, everything that happens in the CZ6 system before you even get face-to-face with a customer. So obviously, it's got to do with not only marketing, but also mindset, your paradigm around how you see yourself and how you see your business. I said, listen, you guys are not accountants. You run an accounting business because these guys were talking to the three partners of the business. And so once you're running the business, you can't say I'm an accountant or I'm a mechanic or I'm a butcher or a baker or a candlestick maker. Yes, of course you are at the technical level, but once you're running the business, you're running the business. You're leading people. You're having a vision. You're looking to go from A to B. You're looking to be more profitable. You're looking to be of more value in the marketplace. You're looking to grow. You're looking to create wealth and prosperity for yourself, your family, your grandkids and beyond. So it's way more than just being a good accountant or a butcher or a baker or a candlestick maker or business coach or retailer or lawyer. You're running a business. Then go to the next step. Once you accept, okay, you're right, I'm running a business. It's a factory of some kind or another. I'm pumping out output, which includes, as John Hughes says, smiling faces. John Hughes is one of the most successful car dealers. He says, I love putting smiles on people's faces. It's a great paradigm in itself is that whether you're running a coffee shop or a hairdresser or a business coach, you want to put smiles on people's faces. So they associate you with a good feeling, by the way, which is a whole other piece. But you're not an accountant. You're running an accounting business. Then part two of that paradigm shift is um, you're not... You're not in the accounting business, you're not in the retail business, you're not in the law business. If you want to be a good business or an A-grade performer or maximize results, you're in the sales and marketing of the retail business, the law business, the accounting business. So the name of the game is you must have A-grade skills, systems, capabilities, effects of your sales and marketing program sales and marketing systems. If you're getting C-grade results or D-grade results or even Z-grade results, chances are you're having Z-grade skills, systems, and capabilities. So you want to get better results. You're going to need to upgrade your skills and systems and mindsets around sales and marketing. So this this interview with Simon Squibb and um, Rory Sutherland was just fantastic. And Rory besides that is a great communicator using so many fantastic what we call concrete examples little stories and examples to teach the point and one of the points that he made which just was based on a story where he said he's traveling around Wales with his wife on one of the freeways and he knew there was a petrol station because they were a bit hungry and wanted a coffee. They knew, he knew that the petrol station was up the road somewhere. Um, and as they got closer and closer, he said, well, look, the lights aren't on. Um, but uh, I, wonder, I think it's 24 hours, but, the light, but we're so hungry, let's just go in there anyway. And they go in, and sure enough, the little light was on in the shop. And when he goes in to say so to the guy, hey, mate, the, the lights on the road aren't on. And the guy says, oh, the guy on the previous shift must have forgotten to turn them on. And as Rory makes the point, if the guy on the previous shift had have stolen, you know, a Mars bar or, you know, a packet of Mars bars, he would have got the sack because it's cost the business measurable money. But here where he's forgotten to turn the lights on and all these cars are driving past and it's costing 
hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of dollars um, because the guy forgot to turn the lights on. Uh, there's no consequence. Yet that's a, may, a way bigger crime or at least, you know, negative impact on the business than stealing a Mars bar or a packet of Mars bars. And so it got me thinking, you know, with me or you or others, what lights are you not turning on where you're committing an, a, a crime an offence against your business, against your income, because you haven't turned the bloody lights on. So there's a range of other great stories in there as well, but that one really hit me. Have you turned the bloody lights on? Which, again, he uses the example of the fellow that founded Sainsbury's um, retail store in, in England. He said the very last words the fellow said on his deathbed was, make sure you keep the place well lit Make sure you keep the lights on. <laughs> you, know, you know retailing's in the guy's blood when that's his last words. So in your case, in my case, have you turned the lights on? Are you well lit? And by the way, one of my other clients from years ago, Brian Cummins of Cash Converters, you know, he said pawn shops in the old days were just dark, dingy places, and he'd got great training from the founder of Bedshed, who was a fantastic retailer, and Brian paid extra money, did fantastic, because he's a Virgo, so he does fantastic research and got the very best lighting, the very best lighting, LED or whatever it was, so that the highest margins items in the shop were the best lit. And in this case, it was the jewellery. The biggest markup was in the jewellery, the gold and diamonds and the flashy Rolex watches and so on and so on. So get the best lighting on the highest margin products. Isn't that amazing? And of course, in that case also, the jewellery was closest to the door. So you had to, as you walked in, first impressions. And as you work, walked out, last impressions, first impressions and last impressions, well lit. So how does that apply to your business? How well are you lighting up not only your business, but then lighting up your highest margin items of your menu of products and services. And by the way, another fantastic point that they made here was so often, so when Gordon Ramsay goes in to save a restaurant in whatever that show's called, um, Restaurant Survival or whatever, invariably most people had too many things on the menu and were spread so thin, including in the terms of their costs, that Gordon Ramsay says, cut it back to the simple thing that you can deliver on. And invariably, by cutting it back, pruning the rose bush, pruning the menu to make it more focused, that's when they made more money. He also used the example of Steve Jobs. When Jobs went back into Apple and saw that they were working on way too many projects and cut it back to about three or four or five projects, which he said, I think was the, the iPod and the iPhone, maybe the iPad, focus, to focus it back to a fewer range of things rather than too many things on the menu. So what are the big items on your menu that you should be working on instead of doing too many things to prune it back? So many great ideas here. Hope this helps. If you're going to lead your best life as a business person, some of the things I've just spoken about are so important in terms of upgrading sales, marketing skills. You're not you're not in the accounting, law, business uh coaching business or consulting or retail or furniture sales or electrical sales, you're in the sales and marketing of that. Upgrade your sales and marketing skills, systems and capability and watch your results soar. That's what we say. Let's put wings on your business. Put wings on your thinking. Put wings on your business. Hope this helps. I'm Lee Farnell. I want to find out more. Do touch base. Take action. Get some of our free downloads and checklists. I can deal with, I think, one new client in the next month. So if you want to be that person, reach out and say, hey, Lee, let's have a chat. I want to find out how to upgrade my sales and marketing skills, transform results. I love working with people who want to change and grow, who are good learners, who are coachable. If that's you, reach out. See you soon. Thanks for listening. See you next time. This is Leading Your Best Life.